Hey, Cider Crusaders. So what path, what legal pathway, avenues to the president ha does the president have uh, moving forward here? Let's talk with Zach Smith. He's a legal fellow at the Mies Center, which is part of the Heritage Foundation. Zach, how are you, brother? I'm doing okay. Thanks so much for having me on good. today. Yeah, good to talk to you. So uh, what, what can the president do? What's next? Well, he's filed four or five lawsuits in four or five different states right now. He's lost some. He's won some. Unfortunately, you know, he's facing a tough road ahead to uh, overturn the, uh, you know, what looks like the outcome of the election through litigation right now. Uh, probably his best path for getting reviewed by the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, is a case out of Pennsylvania right now uh, that's challenging the Pennsylvania Supreme Court's decision uh, to allow uh, absentee ballots to be filed late after Election Day. And so that looks like the one that's most likely to make its way up to the U.S. Supreme Court right now. Okay, so these are the mail-in ballots that could be arriving after Election Day and without even a postmark on them, which seems insane. So my understanding that's is right. that the Secretary, the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania did that unilaterally without the legislature, and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, for whatever reason, said it's okay. Was there any... Any like legal recourse that gave the Secretary of State ability to do that in a time of pandemic or anything? Is there any legal loophole that the state can come back and say, no, no, no we're allowed to do this in extreme circumstances? Well, this is an issue we've been confronting in many different areas during the coronavirus pandemic. And I think it's worth emphasizing here, there is no pandemic exception to the Constitution. And in fact, that's when the Constitution is most important during times of crisis. And so if we go back and look at the Constitution, the Constitution says that it's state legislatures, not the Secretary of State, not the governor, not state courts, not federal courts, state legislatures that have the authority to set election rules and election procedures. And unfortunately, in Pennsylvania, that's not what happened. So I, I, I'm with you. I wonder if there's any, like in 1926, the Pennsylvania legislator passed a law that said in times of crisis, the Secretary of State has the ability to make a decision, right? Or do you think there was any of that in there or no? Not that I'm aware of. You know, I'm not... Okay. Uh, an expert on Pennsylvania law by any means. But, you know, we saw this same issue crop up in Texas. We've seen it crop up in places like Alabama, you know, really across the country with, where governors, state uh, election officials are taking it upon themselves to basically unilaterally rewrite election rules and rewrite them very close to the election. And so that's yeah. been a major issue uh, during this cycle and unfortunately yeah. is... Uh, now causing a lot of problems. Totally. Okay, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate or trying to find the benefit of the doubt for Pennsylvania because obviously I want the president to win that lawsuit. Now, the next question is, as Alito has said, let's put those ballots that have arrived after Pennsylvania aside. The question is, have those ballots been... Like, if I look at the Pennsylvania results right now, do they include those ballots? Meaning, if we don't count those, could the state flip or does it not even matter, you think? Well, it's unclear right now whether the state could flip or the outcome could be altered based on those ballots. But what Pennsylvania state courts have said, what Justice Alito said uh, last week, makes a lot of common sense. Until we resolve the legal issues surrounding these ballots, keep them separate, separate them out so that we can easily go back and undo the results, uncount these ballots if we need to. And so unfortunately, it wasn't clear that a lot of Pennsylvania election officials were doing that. Uh, but since Friday evening with Justice Alito's order, uh, they have to do that. Okay, geez, I wonder if that could actually turn any outcome in the end. Wow, okay, uh, we got another couple minutes here. Give me another lawsuit you think that is noteworthy. Sure. So I think the other very interesting lawsuit that highlights another important issue is the one out of Nevada. Basically, the allegation there, the Trump campaign is saying that potentially thousands of ineligible voters, uh, in fact, voted in Nevada's election. And unfortunately, part of the reason for that is that Nevada's voter registration rules are notoriously bad, notoriously out of date. And so the fact that Nevada moved to an almost uh, all vote by mail system uh, this past election really amplified a lot of those problems, it looks like.
Mm. So we have Pennsylvania. He didn't. He would need to flip Pennsylvania, Arizona, or Nevada, and then maybe a recount in Georgia with some some issues there, right. perhaps. And then that would that would be it. That would be enough. Or even in Arizona too, as those results are still being counted. Jeez, that's amazing. Now time is an issue here, right? As we we talked about in a previous segment, December thirteenth is when the states all get together. Uh, the, the individual states go to their state capital and vote. So are we going to be able to get some outcomes on these lawsuits quickly? Well, I'm certainly hopeful we can. You know, states have until December 8th. There's a safe harbor provision in the Electoral College, uh, the, the statutes enacting yet, where if states can resolve any issues or disputed votes by December 8th, their votes will count. Uh, so I think everyone's certainly aware of that, and judges, the Supreme Court justices certainly are. And so I think there hopefully will be a real emphasis on getting this resolved by that December 8th safe harbor deadline. Okay, let's do it. Let's hope. Zach Smith, legal fellow, Me Center Heritage Foundation. Uh, Zach, as we get more details of these cases, I'd love to have you back on and, and break them down for us. Great. Thanks so much. I really appreciate Thanks, that. Sir.